have arrived at our campground in Pennsylvania. It's called Gifford Pinshot something State like that Park. State Park. And as you can see, we're a level. Slides are out. We negotiated the trees, and then I flipped the switch on the on the pedestal. My EMS surge protect projector protector gave me an error code indicating we had low voltage on the pedestal. So I turn it back off. I go down to talk to the park host because there's no number to call anybody. Um, the park host calls maintenance. Maintenance says they may be able to get out here. Well, it's four o'clock on a Tuesday. That's, that doesn't work for me. So he called the front office. They were still there. And um, they have no other pet friendly electric only sites. So I asked him for full hookups, any other site. And he said he had to call the manager to see if they could move us into a non-pet electric site. Yeah, this is the first time since we've been full-timing that we've had any kind of error code on the pedestal. Um, and the first time I saw it, I was like, whoa, what was that? That wasn't E0. For those of you that do not have a Progressive Industries EMS surge protector like we do, this is our 50 amp surge protector. On the side of it right here, it gives you your your error codes. Um, any Anything from E0 to E6, it says to report to the campground. So we got an E6 and that's what I did. Any E7 to E10 on there, that's bad. And I'm supposed to call um, tech support prog at Progressive Industries. Mike, I'm calling back from your next day, Park. Yeah. You wouldn't happen to have a long enough cord to hook up to one of the sites next to you, would you? Um, no. would, would I have to move or move it when somebody came in on Friday? He's saying they, the more they can have maintenance come and fix it in the morning. Oh, so this would be temporary. So then, but then, because both sites next to you are open tonight. So okay. Look up there. Yeah. Make that reach. Yeah. Um, and then he said we could refund you for tonight. Okay. Um, let me, I'm going to have to um, unfurl my, my cords and see the one to the right of me, 230, um, is probably closest. So let me try that. And if it works, or if I, I'll let you know, I'll give you, can I call you back at this number? Okay, let me do that. Uh, I, I, uh, I mean, if you and if you, you could move over to that site too, but then you have to move back. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather try the cord because I'm already slides out and level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, so I'll give you a call back in about five minutes. The beauty of having the EMS surge protector is I can plug it in without plugging the rig in to check to make sure that the pedestal is good to go. And as usual, every breaker in here was left on. So whoever left this site before just unplugged and didn't uh, kill the breaker. So always make sure you check the breaker and make sure they're off before you plug in. Alright, so she's plugged in. Lift the breaker. So far so good. E0. 60 hertz. E0. So we're good. Now let's see if the cords will reach. This is not very long. Okay, missed it by that much. So now we got to close her back up and try to move her up and maybe over a little bit more. Okay, we're connected. So now, <laughs> this is tight right here. Um, yeah, we're good for now. So, all right, let's go ahead and level her and open her back up. When you're RVing, you gotta you gotta roll with the punches. Yeah. Things are not gonna always go perfect. Things like this happen all the time. You know, it's not your house where you're plugging in a to a regular socket, so you gotta make sure it's safe for the RV, and uh, we have to accommodate that. Yeah, and we let's see what time is it. Yeah, we've been at the park now for two hours. <laughs> and <laughs> Well, we had to dump first, and we had to fill, fill the water. water. Yeah, that we took a half hour. Yeah. So, so, and then, we, you know, we had to get to our site and get level and all that, and then undo and redo. <laughs> <sighs> I need a shower. He <laughs> always needs a shower. He's shower sweaty. Bad. The park maintenance guys showed up this morning promptly at around 8 o'clock. Uh, they came out, they tested the pedestal, and one of the legs had dropped is what they said. Um, meaning we had a bad breaker. So they swapped out the breaker, 
um, turned everything on, tested it, and bam, we're back in business. So it was a 10 minute fix and these guys knew exactly what it was. I will reconnect my EMS and just double check it with it before I hook the rig into it. When we first started out full timing, I would take the EMS search protector and I would plug it into the pedestal to check and make sure everything was good there before we lowered the jacks and opened the slide. We kind of got away from that in all the boondocking that we've been doing. So now I'm gonna go back to my original plan, check it before we do anything with Ruby. We thought the best way to show you this state park would be to just take you with us on a ride so you can take a quick peek at it. So you can explore it while we explore it. There's a ton of trails to hike and, and bike. And also one of the trails that run through here is the Mason Dixon Trail, which is 200 miles long. And I think it goes all the way to the Appalachian Trail, but don't quote me on that. So, and we won't be taking that trail. <laughs> no, that's a little long for us yeah. today. We're doing a short ride, not a 200 mile ride. If you don't have your RV yet, but you're not planning on waiting, you know, the next couple years to live your best life, don't worry, there's cabins here. There is, and this cabin is right on the water and it has got the most perfect view. Yes. I was just telling Stacy, this would be awesome to sit out here in the morning and have our coffee. That is for sure. They also have yurts here too, so you could rent either one. This park is really nice. Yeah, and this spot here is called a Willow Cabin. And it's got, yeah. it's almost like it's own little private oasis right here. I mean, it is. Uh, surrounded by trees and I mean this is really really nice. Yeah so if you're looking for a cabin here check out Willow first. We had a nice little four mile ride through the park um, and that was strictly on park roads. We didn't go on trails or anything like that so it was nice. Yeah there is only one trail that allows bikers. All the rest are hiking trails so I think on Friday we'll hit some of the trails with our tennis shoes on. Yeah I think so. Good idea. Yeah so all that's left now is putting these bikes back on the rig. Yeah fun stuff. I turned Stacy's around so the bike cover fits on there a little bit better. So I put this this rag wrap old t-shirt piece around the frame um, because as you as Stacy will show you um, the arm that hooks over the bike is padded although I didn't think about it the first time we used it because it was padded it, the vibration of it being back here rubbed the paint off on the frame. So now I just put that cloth on there um, and I put this pull noodle that I cut over the top of it as well. Um, and you're probably thinking, well, the, the pull noodle itself would probably work or the rag. Well, I've tried them and <laughs> oddly enough, they rubbed a hole through both of those. So now, since I've been using this method uh, with the t-shirt or the rag and the pull noodle, I haven't had any other paint or rub marks on the frame itself, so this seems to be working. This one is our Pro Bike, bike Tool bike cover, and the bike rack is the flatbed Transit 2, meaning it'll hold two bikes. This is the second cover, and this one's held up a lot better than our first one. If you're interested in either one of these, these will be on our website today at someday.net. Well, I roll down there. Let's go around one more time. Okay, normal? Yeah, I'm going to try to do it again. Watch your head, Stacey. Oh, Watch yours. <laughs> We are about a, what, a quarter of the way, maybe halfway. Through, Probably about a quarter of the way through. Through our tour, and I am loving it. Yeah, this is this is a great way to see Gettysburg. Yeah, it act. We actually have a, um, I don't know, licensed Gettysburg historian. I guess whoever it, you know on the property, I guess the national park has to actually be certified to talk about it. And this segue comes with its own. Yeah, so he's telling us in our little ear here what's going on as we drive through the uh, national park. This is a perfect way to have a little fun on wheels and get all your little um, Civil War history lesson 
in a little two-hour format. Yeah, Stacy's in heaven right now because she's <laughs> getting history and dragging me along. But I'm having fun on the Segway, so it's pretty interesting. It's win-win. Yeah, it is. I'm, I'm enjoying it. We just finished our Gettysburg Segway tour, and I gotta say, I highly, highly recommend it. Yeah, that was the longest Segway tour that we've taken. We've had few, a few of those tours. Yeah. This was about a three-hour tour. <laughs> oh, no. I hated to do that, but it was a three-hour tour. Yeah, it was very cool. It was 70 bucks a piece, unless you're a veteran, and we got $35 off. Um, wow. Yeah, so 25% that takes a, a nice chunk of change off. So, highly recommend it. You don't have to be have anything special to do it. They will go over it and train you until you're comfortable. Just make sure you wear comfy shoes because you tend to grip your feet just yeah. a little bit as you're yeah. going, but anybody can do it. Yeah, this was the most intense training um, that we've had on a Segway tour On any well. Segway tour. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they really, really go over safety with you, yeah. and they want to make sure that you have it down before you get out on the road and it was a must. I, I say if you're here and you want to do a quick tour, well not a quick tour, but a tour of, of the National Park here in Gettysburg, this is the way to do it. With a guide. Yeah. So yeah. you have an audio guide in your ear as you're driving down the road and it's telling you all about what happened on either side of the road. So thumbs up. We loved it. Yeah. So come see them. I'm adding a new sticker to Ruby today. It's the Road Life Project and you know how we love them. If you're looking for health insurance, they have great group health insurance and they also have a ton of stuff for kids. So if your kids are looking for community, this is the place to go. They have a new program called Digital Pen Pal and I'll put links for everything below. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that I am putting a new page on our website that's going to include future meetups. For now, it's going to have our virtual full-time Freedom Week. And if you haven't heard about that, click down below. It is a virtual mega event, and it's going to have a ton of information for you. We are a part of it, and you get to be a part of it in your jammies. So click that link below for that. We're also going to be at the Our Village Rally, and we're going to be at the Get Together, our rally for Battleborn coming up next year. So I'm going to have all those dates and places on our website, and I'll also post links below. Today's hike is brought to you by the Mason-Dixon Trail. <laughs> <laughs> no. She's been practicing to say that. <laughs> no, I haven't. No, seriously, we, we're doing a hike at the state park, and the state park actually labeled this Ridge Trail. But it is a part of the Mason-Dixon Trail, which runs over, I think it's 200 miles and goes all the way to the Appalachian Trail. That sounds about right. Pretty long. Pretty long. So it's, hopefully it's a good hike. But her feet are a little sore from yesterday at Gettysburg. Yeah, that was still, um, even though we're a little sore today, um, that was a great segue tour uh, through the, the Gettysburg National Park for sure. Yeah, our toes were gripping. Yeah. We're gripping the um, the Segway, so make sure you wear great shoes with super art support. Yeah, art support is a must. We were just doing the training inside the building, and my feet were already feeling it. So that, that's what tells you or shows you how intense um, that is on the Segway. But it's a ton of fun. Don't get us wrong. Oh, yeah. Ton of fun. You got to do it. You got to do it at least once. If you have, if you don't do it in Gettysburg, find it somewhere. It's a great way to see a city yeah. quick. And then you know which parts you want to go back to and explore a little bit longer. Yeah, good point. Although you know that was not our first time at Gettysburg. No, it was not. That was actually our second time since we hit the road full time. That was a pretty good segue. Ooh, mm, see what I did nice. there? See what I did there? So we're starting out today at the visitor center where I recommend everyone start. And hopefully it's not raining on you when you start here. Yeah, well, what are we gonna do? We had actually wanted to do a Segway tour of Gettysburg. We love taking Segway tours, but they do not give you a refund if it rains. You just ride in the rain and get pelted. Yeah, and so we're gonna walk in the rain instead. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, well. But we have these. Yeah, I would much rather do that than Segway. Um, but let's go inside and get a map and, and chart our, our plan for the day. So we just finished at the Welcome Center and it was very cool. Yeah, we uh, went in and saw the brief video first and then we went up to the Cyclorama yeah. room. Um, and that was about an hour in length for both of those combined. Very informative. Yeah, and this is, if you're coming to this area, this is a must stop in first. Yeah, that way you kind of get a grasp of what you want to do. There are, of course we had to pay to do to see the short film and the um, cyclorama, we have to pay for that. And by the way- Plus the museum was included. And the museum. I'm not a history guy, but this was pretty cool. Yeah, so catch this and then you can decide how you wanna see Gettysburg. You can um, pay to do a um, bus tour where they drive you around and they actually have somebody there to tell you you know, about the sites. Narrate, yep. Or you can do a self auto tour, which is what we're gonna do. We have the map, we're just gonna pick a few places to go check out. Yeah. That, I like that the best because we're on our own terms. We're not yeah. stuck um, on a bus. You can also, if you're a really huge Civil War fan, you can actually hire a tour guide to be in your car with you and drive them around and you get your own one-on-one -on -one historian. Now that's cool. Yeah, that is kind of cool. So, all right, so we're gonna go check out some of the sites here on at Gettysburg and um, see what we can come up with. We're gonna try to stay somewhat dry. Wish us luck. If you make it out to Gettysburg, I have the perfect picnic spot for you. We saw it yesterday when we were on the Segways. It is at Little Round Top. Little Round Top. <laughs> That's right. I thought I was going to forget it. Little Round Top. In between, if you um, go up to the site, to the right, you'll see a statue of a man. And then to the left, you're going to see a monument with a profile, a bronze profile. And you'll see him. he's got a really shiny nose where everybody touches his nose. Not sure why, yeah. but in the middle of the two, you're going to see a huge flat rock big enough for two or three people to sit on it, stretched out and have their lunch. We saw a couple on it yesterday and I was like, oh, yeah, that's the spot. And I wish we'd have had a sandwich. <laughs> that was a perfect spot. We made it down to the lakeside here um, at the state park. And as you can see behind us, it's pretty nice, it's pretty quiet. I think we've got the park all to ourselves. There doesn't seem to be anybody here. I think that's what happens after Labor Day. Everybody goes back to work and school. <laughs> Perfect for us. We are packing it up to leave this state park in Pennsylvania. I really, really like the state park. There's a lot to do here. And we were only 35 minutes from Gettysburg. So that was really nice and convenient. But we are headed to driveway surf at our friend Lori's house. Well, I don't know if you'd really call it driveway surfing because we won't be staying in the RV. We will just be parking it in the driveway because her driveway is so steep we can't level. So we'll be sleeping in her guest room and using up all her hot water and shower, well, as much as possible. And of course, just like kids coming home from college, we'll be hitting up her laundry room. 